Hey everybody, what's up? It's Matt here, and not Vinny, and I'm playing the Stanley Parable. This has actually been sitting in the guy's computer for like three years now. Uh, just one other thing, this isn't going to be a consistent series. Um, we're just kind of going to do this whenever the hell we feel like it. So, uh, without further ado, I guess, let's just begin. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at the desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. Hmm. Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Oh god, the Fire Nation didn't attack, did it? Forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Hmm. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, before we start, just, I, I doubt that there's any of you that don't really know this game, but basically it's like a choose-your-own-adventure with a bunch of storytelling tropes basically flipped on their heads. So, with that in mind, uh, let's get going. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Hmm. Alright. So we have this omniscient narrator uh, telling us where to go. I guess we might as well follow his instructions. I see no reason why not. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right. Hmm. Oh, this is kind of eerie. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Right, so he's telling me to go to my boss's office. How to solve a dispute with a co-worker. Let it ball up inside you. Take it out of... What? Uh, I was... Wait a minute. Who's controlling the projector? Rightio. Anyway, I feel that something is very much uh, wrong right here. <laughs> Oh, I know about this. <laughs> Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. What's on this, uh... Is that a film reel? Hmm. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. Oh, there's he gotta wasn't be. even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. There's gotta be and something he is, here. He's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> oh, all right, fine. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. He did not. I'm going to see what happens if I obey him and then disobey him. Oh, 
this is creepy. But Stanley just couldn't do it. Is this my car? He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? Why is the parking why garage right next to all this stuff? Everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And uh, then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Uh, all of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. Such as? For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did uh, doors close automatically behind video, him wherever he Because I'm a video ga ga And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Yeah, I did notice that. Repeating. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. Yeah. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He's a video he game character. found the words for it. I'm dreaming! Oh. He yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. Well, you know, going to lose his job. ending it with a dream is like the laziest storytelling device you could possibly use. I I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. <laughs> so, he imagined himself Look at this. flying and began Woo. to gently float above the ground. Wait, I did? Then he imagined oh. himself soaring hey. through space on a magical star field, and it too what? appeared. It was <gasps> so much fun. Oh. Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. Oh. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley. Oh God. It particularly strange. I'm oh. dreaming about a voice describing me Thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. This is so meta! And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, <laughs> the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. How long is this going to go on? Did see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? Yeah. This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job all I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Why do I feel like I'm not okay? <laughs> Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just oh, God. tell me I am real. I must be real, I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who oh, wow. I? Who am I? Ah. Everything went black. What? This got very this is dark. The story of a woman named Mariella. Wait, what? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. Oh, God! On this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself. And 
then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. Hey, the truly insane the never doubt their sanity, Mr. Wasn't. Narrator. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Can we, can we play that game? Any chance we could play that game? Um... That got dark! <laughs> Holy crap! Um... Alright, well, next time on The Stanley Parable, I'm going to try just straight disobeying him for a while and then see what happens. Um... God, I should not have disobeyed him after one attempt. Ah, uh, that, that was fucked, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, well, I'll see you guys next time, whatever the hell that is. And in the meantime, it's been Matt, and I will see you all very soon. Bye!